What's going on y'all and welcome on in. Today I want to cover a bunch of units here as you can see that are both free to play accessible so no moonlights no limiteds in case you started playing at a certain time where they aren't available a lot of these are three star specialty changes some of them are four stars and the rest are five stars that you can pick up on their banners selectors selective summons all that good stuff and i think all these units are amazing for pvp um for standard players i mean they can work on kind of just any set that you have access to and then later on you can specialize them into better uh roles suited for your playstyle. so overall i'm going to go through each one pretty quickly here give some example stats builds maybe show some screenshots and yeah hopefully this will help you guys just find some solid units to invest in that you can pick safely and a lot of these units or almost all these units except for the bottom row can kind of be picked in almost any match and they'll provide good enough value depending on how well you draft them okay so without further ado let's get into it Really quickly before we start guys, if you enjoy the video, if you've seen any of my other content and you want to see more of it, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. We're trying to boost those numbers up. All right, y'all, let's get straight into it. Really quick before we start, let, let me remind you of the criteria again. These are all very accessible units. No Moonlight 5 stars or 4 stars. No limited units. That includes collaboration and just your DN Landy Lunas. Um, so if there's anything on this list that fits that criteria that you also think your fellow viewers epic seven players should maybe try to invest into please in the comments below go ahead and answer because you know of course i'm gonna i missed out on a few and i kind of only picked the top ones just for the sake of video runtime okay let's start guys let's start with the bruiser row we have alencia just a super strong earth bruiser right now um stat wise we want to make sure she has high hp as she's an hp scaling bruiser don't neglect the defense. Try for 1,200, 1,300 plus at least, guys. Um, speed anywhere from 180 to 220. Those are just broad ranges. You could get away with a little less, but try not to. Um, and, of course, it's close to 100 crit and 250-plus-ish uh, crit damage. Those are all flexible, guys, depending on what you have. But uh, in the beginning, if you're lacking gear, just throw on any set you have. So speed sets, destruction sets, depending on if you're farming Wyvern or Banshee. Offsets can be crit or immunity. A lot of y'all probably just run crit set if you're doing a lot of Wyvern. And then eventually, guys, venture into things like pen set or immunity set, like I just mentioned. And then long, long term, guys, one of the meta builds is injury, which is very nice for fighting tanky units. And especially for fighting units like Apocalypse Ravi, the initial S1, if you land D-break, hit that maximum amount of injury. There's no barriers. You can sometimes hit that like 30% of uh, units max HP already injured, if not even more. And then by the second turn of uh, Valencia, you know, you already at capping that 50% injury. It's absolutely insane. But, uh, oh, last thing, exclusive equipment. Go for either the lifesteal or the damage. It's really just preference at that point. But Valencia, very versatile. In terms of the speed tuning real quick, 180 to 220 speed, I said, somewhere around that range. Just make sure, for example, if you want to have her strip before a unit like Senya, Make sure, you know, you speed tune that 10 speed differential is just a rough estimate. Um, that should be safe. But overall, one of the strongest bruisers at the moment can fight Apocalypse Ravi, can strip, can provide defense up, has AoE, has super strong single target damage with access to defense break. Very, very good, guys. Invest in her ASAP. Uh, next up, boys, we have Senya, the other Earth Bruiser, who's super, super strong at the moment, too. This unit can be built in a lot of different ways, depending on your taste. Some of the high legends that I've talked to really like effect resist. I personally liked high effectiveness because sometimes if you land that S3 and you hit their Soul Weaver like the end that doesn't have too much effect resist, it's game over from there as they have no access to strip. You provoke everything. They all hit in the Senya and pretty much delete themselves. So... Build-wise, um, same thing as Alencia. Kind of just stack whatever you have. Usually speed set is just the safest. Uh, speed immunity, for the most part, if you have like speed health or a speed defense set, whatever it can work. Speed broken set, honestly, guys. Six pieces of speed. Whatever you have access to, just focus mainly on attack. Try to get enough health and defense. That's going to vary depending on if you're trying to go into effectiveness or effect resist. In the very beginning, though, guys, if you just want a generic Senya, you don't even have to worry too much about effect resist or effectiveness. Just make sure she has a ton of attack with her artifact. That is one minor thing, guys. You do want her artifact, Spear of a New Dawn. Um, if you don't have it, maybe hold off on building her. Build uh, Lency instead first. But if you do have it, high attack, good enough health and defense. Um... I think that's it. You can tech later into effectiveness or effect resist. Speed, um, same thing as kind of Valencia. Just go for anywhere from like, you know, 170, 180 to 200 plus, depending on what you need, how your stats roll, how many subs you have, if you can hit that, enough HP defense, etc. Very, very strong earth unit as well. 
a little bit more advanced in terms of gearing later on. Specific stats, effectiveness, or effect resist, but yeah. All right, next up, we got Fire Robbie, guys. Recently buffed. The most recently buffed, I think, um, before, yeah, this next patch. Um, she is super strong. Her endgame build, guys, a lot of the endgame players like counter set, myself included. But in the beginning, I think she'll work just fine. I'm sure a lot of y'all can back me up here in the comments since you don't, if you don't have counter yet. If you really need a Fire Bruiser, she's one of them. Uh, you can just put her on a speed or destruction set. Go for counter set in the end game. If you can get a counter set now, that's very good. Artifact wise, Sigurd Scythe is really, really what you want to go for. If you don't have it, there might be a few alternatives, but really try to aim for that Sigurd Scythe. Um, prioritize. Unlike Alencia and Senya, you don't need to have necessarily um, like one stat as she is she's not an hp scaling bruiser but she wants everything so you're going to want to have attack and crit damage just have a balance between the two you can heavily weigh towards attack or heavily weigh towards crit damage they're interchangeable make sure you have close to 100 crit make sure you have plenty of health and enough defense guys seeing a trend with all these bruisers you want health defense attack crit crit damage for the most part unless your name is senya right so overall just a very very strong um far unit right now and I definitely recommend building her very strong in PvE as well. Exclusive equipment, you can run either... I think most people just like the uh, skill one uh, that gives her a... I think it's a cleanse. But that's mostly with counter set. You can choose unbuffable if you want to fight a lot of like Alencia uh, Senya. I don't think it matters too much. Just go for a high roll stat. Last but not least, guys, in the bruiser roll, we have Shu. Who is just so busted right now, guys. Just like Ravi, you're really going to want her on counter set. But I'm sure she can work on anything in the beginning. But really, 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 if you want to maximize her BS potential. I, I have no way else to say it. Her RNG potential where she'll just delete units. Uh, she'll punish your opponents for looking at anyone the wrong way. Get a counter set and get the S1 exclusive equipment that lets her proc the skill to the fush. 40% uh, chance anytime she skill ones. You want to maximize that chance because her skill 3, right? When it is used, she has access to like an Elbrus, meaning anytime her allies are hit, she can counterattack with a skill one. And then if you have counter set on top of that, anytime she's hit as well, you just your opponent is so afraid that she might just skill one into the fush, into the skill two, and just delete units left and right. She's that strong. In the beginning, just give her generic bruiser stats again, guys. Heavy on the HP, speed anywhere in that 180, 200 plus range, whatever need, whatever you need. Uh, but go heavy, heavy on the HP. More like Alencia, less like uh, Senya, Fire Ravia. She's an HP scaling bruiser. Close to 100 crit. Don't neglect the crit damage. Artifact, she's very versatile in artifacts. You can go with her own uh, Snow Crystal. You can go with things like Portrait or even Symbol of Unity. I think those are very popular as well. Um, sky's the limit. And last but not least, guys, in the bruiser row, just be careful picking these. These, these can be used in every comp. That's if, As long as you're not fighting like a Mega Cleave, that's why these are so nice because they have enough bulk to survive and they just do their role well. Just be careful picking them. For example, if you pick a shoe too early, you can get trapped by Earth units. If you pick a Fire Robbie too early, you can get trapped by Ice units, etc. Okay? So just be careful that you have to play that Rock, Paper, Scissor game. Um, it's better to pick like tanks and soldiers in the beginning and then you be the one to counter your opponent's picks for their dps but let's keep going let's pick up the pace and next going to specialty change row okay guys i'm just going to talk about the unit strengths from here on and i'll hopefully put up a screenshot of like example builds um but just to save time i'm not going to spend too much time talking about like the preferred all the types of builds if you need any extra uh, help just leave it in the comments below but let's go with sc row and some of these can be put into the healer row whatever but uh, i want to talk about the specialty change units real quick number one guys this is the absolute best unit right now for almost a lot of categories especially just tanking but anti rimuru as well if you have a lot of trouble fighting that slime who's about to get a rerun boys at least i think so uh make sure you invest in this guy if you're a standard player he's just one of the best knights on top of that so double whammy win build him with high hp i said i was gonna talk about stats but yeah build him with high hp aureus just super strong because of that barrier. He has access to defense up. He can give your highest DPS immunity plus extra damage uh, bringing the dual attacks. He's just so, so good right now, guys. Do not slack on him. I think every player, no matter the play style, should have a Raz ready to go. Next up, guys. This one's a little bit underrated, but I wanted to make sure I talk about Angelic Montmorency. So not only is she very good for PvE, but if you're newer, let's say you don't have access to Destina yet because her banner hasn't come around. You haven't pulled for her. Don't neglect this uh, Momo, guys. She can be used even in, like, Legend Emperor play for real-time arena. Um, the fact that she has so much free effect resist, she's just a very, very strong cleanser. She, unfortunately, you know, falls off. She has no revive. She doesn't have some of the other stuff that other soldiers have, like attack up. So that's why endgame players will not use her, as they have other options. But in the beginning, she is one of the best high effect resist because she has so much of it. And she's really good at just solid cleansing 
for very, very oppressive debuffers like Solitaria, etc. So don't neglect her. If you need her, or if you don't have other Soivers, build her up ASAP. You're going to want to build her anyways from PvE, especially if you're free to play. All right, carry it up next, guys. This is one I see a lot of newer players never pick her. If you didn't know, like a year ago, I'm sure you've heard she was one of these. She was the strongest unit for a time after his SC. But a lot of players stopped dropping her because there's just other options now, other fire units like Ravi. But she is still super, super good. The fact that she has AOE reach, meaning she's skill three can hit units like uh, problem units like Landy, like Spectre Tenebria, and the fact that she's a good fire unit is very very you know it's very important to have her um for newer players especially free to play players um builds her tanky you can run book you can run etica scepter i just think she's really good she's also good in account she's surprisingly good at countering not just earth units but uh other units like i mentioned landy spectre tenebria even things like belly and she can be very very good into the fact that she has that burns just she drops off your opponent is smart and drafts enough heal uh sustain or like cleanses all right, guys, the last two are a little bit, I mentioned the very start, that these are a little bit iffy, um, especially, well, let's just talk about both of them real quick, especially change Pillis. If you don't have more knights than Ross, and you like to pick a knight in every match to, you know, bring that mitigation, then I would advise building Ross plus one more of these. If you don't have units like Troublemaker Crozet, like Fallen Cecilia, Blue Crow, for example, if you don't have those, definitely pick up one of these ladies, as they are both very, very solid right now. Pillis is going to give you that extra... Uh, hit chance versus evasion units like Violet. She's going to bring that extra mitigation for extra attack, counterattack units like Conquer, Lilius, Rem, whatever it might be. Um, she brings that to the table as well as an extra cleanse. Did I mention that? No, I think I mentioned hit chance. So very, very good unit. Just kind of not used as much now that Roz is here. But if you need two knights, remember if your opponent picks Roz, if it's banned, you have another knight backup ready. Bring her if you want to fight evasion units or have that extra cleanse. Arrowell is one that's newer, just recently buffed. But very, very strong, guys. Her only weakness, in my opinion, is uh, maybe the fact that she's a little bit slow and the fact that, you know, some of her buffs only help light units. And, sorry, one more thing. Her only weakness, I said three already. Her last weakness is that her escort can be stripped. So if you fight units like Alencia and you don't have any effect resist built, they can strip you. Hand guy or Mediator Kuwerik. If you have some effect resist, but you fight a high effectiveness unit like Angel of Light Angelica, just be careful, guys, because your escort can get stripped. And if you slap unbuffable as well, she won't be able to upkeep that mitigation, that escort, that buffed Aureus, for example, that can't be, you know, stopped if you use it on a regular knight. But other than that, the full strip plus stun, the light element buffs, I think she's in a very good spot. Um, consider building her if you like to play light units as well. So three knights for you guys that are all very accessible, very free to play. All right, let's go on to the healer row. Destina and Rowana. Destina, guys, just the last week of RTA climb for players going up to Emperor and Legend. Just so, so good right now. Safe pick that you can pick early and just very strong. Revives, one of the best cleansers, has a CR push in S2. Tons of sustain via healing, can have uh, built very, very tanky. She's just a very, very safe unit for standard players. And if you do end up picking up one, Picking one up, guys, I recommend giving her like some of your best uh, soy gear, especially higher effect resist, higher bulk. And you can just pick her in almost every single match, uh, even in some anti cleaves. So, just very, very strong. One of the best, tankiest revive soy weavers. Very safe, very strong. Rowan, a little bit more niche, but a lot of y'all have picked her up for PvE. She's super strong in RT, uh, PvP, Guild Wars Arena, RTA, especially as well. Just you want to use her a little bit carefully and use more as a counter pick. So she could be down in this row as well. But you can trap units like Solitaria, like Archdemon Mercedes. She's even good against units like Commander Pavel. A little bit good against units like Conquer Lilies. Anything with dual attacks, counter attacks. Rowana is so, so nice. Fire Mercedes. Just super, super good. Um, and very important to have, I think, for every player. As she will be a must ban or she'll win you the match. Units like Bellion too. Just be careful of injury. But yeah, super strong right now. Fights off a lot of the meta units. Very, very good in both PvE and PvP. One of the strongest for standard players, free-to-play players, anything. All right. Last but not least, guys, this is just the counter pick row. You could throw in a lot more units here. Now let's go over them really, really fast. I think Politis is super good for standard, as when you fight problem units like Conqueror Lilius, we want to stop that aggression as a standard player. Kind of slow down aggressive anti-cleave comps as well. She's super, super good for that regard with her combat readiness. Um, mitigation as well as her out of turn activation right when they cast a non-attack skill she'll prop that skill two. CR push herself combat readiness push herself well that's what I mean by CR into skill three 
provide a lot of debuffs, etc. On top of that, if you are a standard or even tankier player, you can even build her in a more, uh, we call it degen, but that just means a tankier, sometimes with effect resist style that maybe is more focused on stripping or stunning, ne not necessarily damage. But if you're standard, you can build her with damage if you like to play a little more aggressive, or you can put on like Abyssal Crown, Violin, build her a little bit tankier, and make her super annoying. I think she's a really, really strong unit. Just be careful of aggressive players or cleavers using them and uh, stopping you from using them against them okay Celine is one that I personally was thinking about leaving off the list but I've seen so many of my newer players really really like her on my reviews I have don't have much success with her um, I think as the higher you go up in ranks players become a little bit smarter and have more access to play around her or they just they're able to play around her a little bit better than a unit like Paulus in my experience but if you like her if you need extra earth damage if you have trouble against units you know like uh, the ones I mentioned that Paulus is good against units that cast uh, non-attack skills, you can invest into her and build her. I think she's not bad at all. Violet is one that has been falling off here and there for endgame players, but in the very beginning, if you all saw my other like beginning uh, player tier list, I think he's still super good, and still to this day, even for high rank players, you will pick him uh, rarely in anti-cleave if your opponent picks too many ice units, for example. Um, but in the beginning, if you just need a unit that just pick him later as he does have a lot of counters um, that you just need someone that can potentially hold it down and carrying the late game that can just win you matches that you don't deserve to win because of the evasion RNG then I think he's still very strong and worth it for newer players um, but if you have other options maybe just leave him uh, last but not least guys I just want I threw this in there as kind of a personal pick as she's a four star that a lot of new players don't think or haven't they kind of overlooked her but I think Armin guys is so so good right now she's primarily really used for anti cleave but I've seen some players like to pick her even in the standard as she can provide mitigation and maybe provide some stuns for some gimmick setups like specimen says whatever it might be um, she can work in standard as a damage dealer if you pick her against a lot of AoE but typically you pick her into cleave you put her on Elbris, and then sets can be anything. I like counter sets, increase the chance of those AoE stuns, but she provides mitigation. She can sometimes stop Cleave by AoE stunning their units before they can even set up their comp, and I think she's just super underrated right now um, for a lot of players. I'll put up a build, high defense, build her with a lot of damage so that she can beat those squishy Cleave comps, and yeah, I think she's an underrated pick by far all right guys let's wrap it up there don't forget to let me know if there's any other units you think that newer players should invest into for strong pve potential that won't let them down um but these are my picks so far and you won't be you won't regret investing into any of them all right hopefully this helps you out a little bit and i'll catch you all in the next one don't forget to subscribe thank you guys peace out everybody